It's been five years since the conclusion to one of the biggest trilogies in video game history, Halo. As the main story wrapped after Halo 3, questions still lingered though, possibly the biggest, broadest, and most telling query carrying over to today being, do we need another Halo trilogy, or is it time to move on? That's ultimately the question we hope to answer today as we review Halo 4. Don't make a girl a promise you can't keep. The main story begins with the Master Chief and Cortana floating aboard the back section of the Ford onto Dawn four years after the events of Halo 3. After a brief reintroduction to the situation and characters, the ship is boarded by a group of Covenant and the two are then sucked inside the self-contained shield world, Requiem. Here you're introduced to the crew aboard the UNSC Infinity and a whole new cast of characters. For the sake of brevity and to avoid any potential spoilers, I'll just say that as far as story is concerned, this ranks among my favorites in the franchise. Though I prefer smaller, more intimate stories like ODST, Reach, and the original Halo because of the human interaction. But more than that, I crave the lore from the expanded universe, how outside characters and events actually shape the games. Those who have read every book, watched every video, live action or animated, and played every game will get more here than any other Halo before. It feels like 343 isn't afraid to explore the Halo universe and addresses issues that no other game has ever touched before. Issues like the moral ambiguity of the Spartan 2 program, something I've prayed the games would explore ever since reading The Fall of Reach. By the end of the campaign, I was left with a range of emotions. Sad, confused, happy, confused again. But by the time the final cinematic kicked in, I was ultimately satisfied. And just to clarify, as the time of this review, we've only seen one chapter of Spartan Ops, a completely separate co-op campaign that continues the story six months after the main single player. So while the game does a pretty good job of wrapping up most questions, some more story exposition is promised down the line. Aesthetically, Halo 4 doesn't stray too far from the classic Halo formula. Missions vary from wide open spaces with grand vistas to more claustrophobic environments. Most levels offer something new, constantly infusing that IV drip of new weapons, vehicles, and locations to explore and keep you interested in the game. The only negative and sometimes distracting addition was the occasional quick time event found in the single player, not because of their inherent annoyance, but because of how they actually detracted from key moments in the game. Having trivial gameplay instructions pop up on screen towards the end of a climactic scene more than once took me out of the experience, and I would have loved just to have that option turned off completely. Introduced back in Reach as an armor ability, Sprint is now a default option. While it may be a topic of controversy among the community, it is a welcome addition and finally showcases the speed potential and movement of the Spartans. Armor abilities have returned, though updates like ditching armor lock in favor for the less overpowered hard light shield make the game feel more balanced. While the armor abilities offer variety, at its core, anyone online will survive with your three basic abilities. Shoot, melee, and grenade. It's a tried and true formula and it still works to this day. Look out! What can I say about Halo 4 that hasn't already been seen? The visuals have been massively overhauled to make this the best looking Halo, if not the best looking game on the 360. With that said though, this is a game on hardware that's pushing 7 years, and the inevitable shortcomings of the 360 are definitely shown here. Some textures look low res up close, and while the new lighting system is gorgeous, some might find the overuse of lens flares distracting. The all-new location of Requiem provides a compelling mix of location types familiar from other Halo titles, like jungles and deserts, while adding new Forerunner settings that look absolutely stunning. Amazingly, the art team has managed to create a whole new world while maintaining the look and feel of the previous games. Like its predecessors, most of Halo 4's story is revealed through Cortana's dialogue and in-game cutscenes that feature well-choreographed action and very memorable interaction with new characters. Some of these cutscenes look so good in fact that I could have sworn a few were pre-rendered or CGI, except that the actual CGI used in the game had me questioning whether I was looking at a computer graphic or real life. Now anywhere the game suffers visually from its dated hardware, it is redeemed in the sound department. 
Sound effects that didn't exist in Halo before, like that heavy crunch of your clunky metal boot hitting the ground, are now present, and just about every sound effect just feels a lot more beefy. Every returning weapon has been audibly remastered, with the human arsenal definitely receiving some very obvious special attention. But now to the giant musical elephant in the room, the soundtrack. 343 has retained the spirit of Marty O'Donnell's amazing work while maintaining a cohesive theme throughout the game. It feels like a respectful evolution of the soundtrack, and overall I'm really happy with the direction composer Neil Davidge has chosen for the series. The multiplayer aspect of the Halo franchise is as important, if not more so, than the single player. Halo is the series that made mainstream online console gameplay what it is today, and Halo 4 has embraced the world it helped create. Multiplayer, now called Infinity, is no longer a classic standalone option, as it takes place after and within the main storyline. Infinity itself consists of the map creator Forge, the post-single player story co-op Spartan Ops, and the competitive, and sure to be the most popular, War Games. The three biggest and most major updates in the multiplayer, default sprint, loadouts, and instant respawn are now in the game, but not exactly ever present. Personally, I found that the instant respawn worked really well in free-for-all and slayer game types since it maintained the pace and intensity at a much higher level that I haven't really seen in a Halo game before. It's honestly the most addicted I've ever been to the multiplayer since Halo 3. The map in Playlist Creator Forge has been updated, but its full potential won't be understood until weeks after its release. The addition of player trait zones will make for some really interesting new game types, but it's honestly something I trust the community with over my lackluster abilities. Spartan Ops, the replacement for Firefight, offers five separate micro-missions and attempts to weave a story in and out of each episode. Right now, only one chapter is available, but 343's plan is to release a new set of missions weekly for free. It's big and it's ambitious, but like Forge, it's something we'll have to wait and see how it turns out in the end. The arrival of Halo 4 is a very bittersweet moment. It marks an end of an era, signifying the departure of the studio that created it while well, a new caretaker takes the reins, one that has some ambitious goals for Halo's future. It's been made very clear that 343 has not set out to reinvent Halo. The team just subtracted what didn't work in the previous game and added parts that do. Are there issues? Sure. Like any other game out there, I have minor grievances, but that's because I'm jaded and dead inside. And there was nothing really so glaring that it would take away from my overall positive experience. But still, the big question persists. Do we need another Halo trilogy? The answer to that is a surprising no. For you. The general public that's looking for nothing more than a minor multiplayer distraction. But from one dedicated Halo fan to those looking for an evolution in story, creation, and online play, yes. Yes, we freaking do. Feels good to finally say this, but after many years, Halo is back. <laughs>